Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to the CEC Edusat live lecture. Dear friends, uh, you must be knowing that we have uh, uh, components of a balanced diet and uh, one of the component is carbohydrates. But when we talk about chemistry, this carbohydrate is treated as one of the bio molecule. So dear friends, in uh, this session today, we are going to understand about um, carbohydrates and for this we have again with us in our studios Dr. K.K. Arora. Dr. K.K. Arora is an associate professor in department of chemistry Zakir Hussain Delhi College University of Delhi. So dear friends let's welcome our guest Dr. K.K. Arora and let's try to understand about this biomolecule that is carbohydrates. Hello sir welcome to the Edisit lecture. <coughs> so thank you very much and good afternoon viewers. Uh, today we are going to start a series of uh, lectures on carbohydrates. As you have been told just now that carbohydrate form an important part of our diet and in chemistry we call them as one of the important biomolecules. Today we will discuss that what are these carbohydrates, what are their biological functions, where do they occur in nature, how they are classified then how they are named, then we will take one specific example, the most common of the carbohydrates that is glucose, its preparation and its structure elucidation along with the structure elucidation of fructose and then finally we will summarize our today's work. Carbohydrates form a very large group of naturally occurring organic compounds. The general formula for these compounds was found to be C then X is some number and then H2O Y some number. This was the uh, empirical formula that was determined for most of the compounds of this group and based on this a name carbohydrate was given because this formula indicates as if they are the hydrates of carbon, carbon with water molecules. So they were given this name carbohydrates. Although all the compounds do not fit into this formula, later on some compounds were isolated from nature which do not fit into this formula but most of the compounds they fit into this formula and this name carbohydrate is retained as a name of the class. But when we try to define them chemically that is on the basis of the functional group they are defined as polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones or other substances which give such units on hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means when the bonds are cleaved with water, one of the unit obtained should be a hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. So all those compounds will be classified as carbohydrate. The smallest of the carbohydrate is this molecule CHOCH2OH glycol aldehyde. Now, Carbohydrates as I said they play a vital role in our daily life and the four primary functions of carbohydrates in our body are to provide energy. As I said they form an important uh, part of the diet and they are digested in our body and then they undergo chemical changes by which we get the energy for our day to day work. Then they also function as they store energy that is they are the storage depot of chemical energy in our body. They are used up for building other macromolecules in the body and then finally they spare proteins and fats for other uses. Spare proteins and fat means that in comparison to protein and fats the carbohydrates are first undergo combustion in the body to get the energy proteins and fats are used if carbohydrates are not available for this. Their occurrence, starch present in cereals is a common carbohydrate. Cereals means it is wheat, rice, maize etc. they all contain starch. Glucose and fructose they are also carbohydrates and sucrose these are found in fruits. The sweetness in different fruits is due to presence of these carbohydrates which are also classified as sugar we will discuss little later. Then a carbohydrate which is present in milk is named as lactose. 
potatoes, sweet potatoes and other vegetables, they also contain different carbohydrates. Sugar cane is the main source for sucrose. About 75 percent of the plant material is composed of cellulose, which is also a carbohydrate. That is wood material, which is mainly obtained from plants is a cellulose and it is a carbohydrate. Cotton, which is obtained from plants is almost pure cellulose. Jute is also mainly cellulose. Then you must have heard the names of DNA and RNA. These are the genetic materials in our cell. They also contain carbohydrates that is ribose and deoxyribose. They form a part in the chains of RNA and DNA. Then let us come to their classification. Carbohydrates are classified in different ways and one of the oldest and simplest way of classifying the carbohydrates is according to their taste. If the carbohydrate is sweet, we call them as sugars. The carbohydrates which are not sweet in taste, they are called non-sugars. The most commonly used sugars in our home is sucrose, what we call as stable sugar that we use for mixing in tea or other sweet dishes, it is chemically sucrose. Then other common examples of sugars are glucose, fructose, galactose, maltose, lactose, etc. And these are all sweet in taste, so they are all called sugars. And all other carbohydrates that is starch itself or cellulose or different gums which are obtained from plants, they are not sweet in taste, so they are called non-sugars. Then chemically we classify carbohydrates as monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are those carbohydrates which cannot be further hydrolyzed to simpler units of polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. As we, def we defined before that carbohydrates are polyhydroxyaldehydes are ketones. If we have a molecule and it cannot be hydrolyzed further to any simpler molecule which contains hydroxyl group as well as aldehyde or ketonic groups, then that will be named as monosaccharide. And examples of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, ribose, deoxyribose, etc. Then oligosaccharides. The molecules which on hydrolysis gives about 2 to 10 monosaccharide units, then they are called oligosaccharides. If they give two units of monosaccharides, we may call them disaccharides. If three monosaccharides are obtained, they are called trisaccharides and so on. Uh, two common examples of disaccharides are sucrose and maltose. Then polysaccharides. Those carbohydrates which on hydrolysis yield a large number of monosaccharide units, they are called polysaccharides. Their examples are starch, cellulose, glycogen, etc. Then we can also classify them on the basis of their chemical reaction and on this basis carbohydrates are classified into two main groups. They are called as reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. Reducing and non-reducing we know from our chemistry that we can differentiate by using this test between aldehydes and ketones also that aldehydes can be easily oxidized. So, they reduce the reagents, they are reducing whereas ketones are non-reducing. But here in case of carbohydrates, it has been found that even some ketones, they undergo the same test which we use to differentiate between aldehydes and ketones when there is only one functional group. We will come to the reason for this little later. So, they reduce failing solution and tolerance reagent, we will call them as reducing sugars. All monosaccharides are reducing sugars, whether they contain aldehyde group or they contain an aldehyde group and a reason for this is they have a free carbonyl group. The other carbohydrates which are non-reducing, they may be some disaccharides, trisaccharides, some oligosaccharides or even polysaccharides. 
which do not reduce felling solution and tolerance reagent. They are classified as non-reducing sugars and obvious reason for this is they have bonded aldehyde car ketonic group which are not available for the reaction with this felling solution or tolerance reagent. So, we can classify carbohydrates in different ways whether they are sugar or non-sugar, whether they are monosaccharides, oligosaccharides or polysaccharides or they are reducing or non-reducing sugars. All these classifications are required at different places. Then how do we name them? Obviously, the smallest units are monosaccharides. So, we will look for the nomenclature for monosaccharides first. This is any carbohydrate which has an aldehydic functional group in that. And those carbohydrates which have aldehydic group in them, we call them as aldoses. Although this is the glucose whose structure is written here, but here I am talking in terms of a class only. So, this is aldose. If a monosaccharide has got aldehyde group, we will call it as aldose. And if it contains a keto group, this is C double bond O in between the chain. So, it is a ketone functional group, then we will call them as ketos. This is actually fructose. Then in aldose and ketose, we introduce the number of carbon atom because we can have monosaccharides containing different number of carbon atoms. Such as if we have a monosaccharide with three carbons, we will generally call it as triose, a four carbon tetrose, a five carbon pentose, six carbon hexose, similarly seven carbons heptose. Now, if this carbohydrate or monosaccharide containing so many carbons has got an aldehydic functional group, then we will introduce the term aldo before these. That is a three carbon aldehydic monosaccharides will be named as aldotriose. A five carbon aldehydic monosaccharide will be named as aldopentose and so on. And suppose that monosaccharide has got a keto functional group, then we will introduce a term keto before it that is a 3 carbon sugar or 3 carbon monosaccharide which contains ketone functional group will be called as keto triose. If there are 6 carbon atom and it has a ketonic functional group then we will call it as a keto hexose and so on. So, this name contains how many carbons are there in the chain, what is the functional group in the chain whether it is aldehydic or ketone. Then the carbohydrates are also named by their common names such as this is a 4 carbon aldehydic monosaccharide which is commonly named as erythrose. But if you want to name it systematically, we will call it as aldotetrose. This is a ribose, a 5 carbon sugar with aldehydic functional group this is known as aldopentose. This is fructose it has got a ketonic functional group, it is a keto hexose. This is glucose, it has aldehydic functional group, 6 carbon in the chain, this is aldohexose. These carbohydrates mostly disaccharides or polysaccharides, they are most often remembered or they are used with their common names. We will take the detailed study of glucose. And it is the history of almost 100 years in the structure determination of glucose. And as some developments were made, the name was changed, means something more was added to the name. Initially, when this compound was discovered, it was named as glucose. When we came to know that this compound is optically active and it is dextrorotatory, a plus sign was introduced before the name and then it was named as plus glucose. Then they were given certain configurational nomenclature and it was found to belong to D series or it say that its configuration is D, then its name was given as D plus glucose. This was the name till it was considered that glucose has got a open chain structure. Then further studies showed that this glucose has got a cyclic structure. And then 
the ring might be a six membered ring or a five membered ring. Then based on that the two names were given a six membered glucose was named as D plus glucopyranose and a five membered ring structure for the glucose it was named as D plus glucofuranose. This name pyran and furan are actually derived from some other uh, organic compounds which are six membered containing one oxygen or five membered containing one oxygen. Then further study showed that when this open chain structure get converted into cyclic structures then two isomers are formed and these two isomers were named as alpha and beta. Say if the six membered ring structure is there it also exists in two different forms which were named as alpha D plus glucopyranose and beta D plus glucopyranose. So, we will also go in the study of glucose in the same stepwise manner and see that how the name changed and how the structure elucidation was carried out. Uh, before moving on to that let me talk about the configurational nomenclature which is co also called as DL system. What do you mean by configuration? The exact arrangement of atoms in space which characterizes a particular stereoisomer is called its configuration. And this is the smallest possible carbohydrate uh, with one asymmetric carbon atom that is which can show optical isomerism. This is glyceraldehyde. And when we write the configuration for glyceraldehyde, the two isomers are possible. So, we write these two configuration. The first configuration represents plus glyceraldehyde and this configuration which is the mirror image of this is minus glyceraldehyde. They are the enantiomers. Glyceraldehyde exists in two enantiomeric forms one is plus glyceraldehyde or minus glyceraldehyde. This plus or minus signs they are also uh, represented sometimes by small d and small l which represent dextrorotatory or levorotatory. So, dextrorotatory or levorotatory are written with small d or small l these letters before the name in place of this plus or minus sign. So, there are two possible isomers for glyceraldehyde. Actually the configuration for other carbohydrates were correlated with this glyceraldehyde because we can get different carbohydrates when chain lengthen is carried out on this aldehyde side. So, configuration at this lower two carbons where this one the last but one carbon is asymmetric carbon atom which is giving chirality to this molecule. Uh, this is considered for comparison and this carbon is compared with the lower most asymmetric carbon atom of any compound. We can write the Fisher projection for these uh, isomers of glyceraldehyde because they represent a planar representation like this. Uh, you know uh, in the knowledge of stereochemistry that the groups which are represented in this way they are the groups which are going away from the wears and they are written on a vertical line and on the horizontal line the groups which are written they are coming towards the viewer. So, these thick lines indicate the groups are coming towards us and these lines indicate groups going away from us and this is the Fisher projection for that. Similarly, minus glyceraldehyde is represented in Fisher projection like this. So, this hydroxyl comes on the right when aldehyde is written on the top and this hydroxyl comes on the left when the two isomers plus glyceraldehyde and minus glyceraldehyde are written respectively in Fisher projection. So, as I said it is the configuration of this carbon which is compared with the other sugars and if a sugar written in the Fisher projection has the hydroxyl placed on the right side on the lower most asymmetric carbon atom then we say that it has a D configuration and if the hydroxyl comes on the left side we say it has got L configuration. So, if this hydroxyl is right on the right side then we say it is D series of sugars and if this hydroxyl is on the left side we say it is L series of sugars. 
Let us have some examples. This is one isomer of 3 O's, this is another isomer of 3 O's. This has the hydroxyl at the lowermost asymmetric carbon atom placed on the right side. So, it is assigned a D configuration, it is D 3 O's and this has hydroxyl on the left side, this is L 3 O's. Similarly, this is xylose and this isomer has hydroxyl on the right side, the lower most asymmetric carbon atom. Here there are 3 asymmetric carbon atom 1, 2, 3, the lower most because it is this portion as I said which is compared with glyceraldehyde. So, this is hydroxyl on the right, this is assigned a D configuration, this is D xylose and here the hydroxyl is on the left hand side, this is assigned the configuration L xylose. Now, let us talk about this glucose or D plus glucose or it is also commonly known as dextrose about its structure and its synthesis. In free state, it occurs in honey, sweet fruits and it is a normal constituent of blood. You must have heard the name of blood sugar. We talk about in disease that what is the sugar level in the blood. Actually, the sugar level in the blood is due to glucose. It is not that table sugar which is present in the blood, it is glucose which is measured and which is present in the blood and that is uh, circulated with the help of blood to different cells where it undergoes combustion to give the energy for our day to day functioning. It is a colorless crystalline solid, it is soluble in water, it is optically active as I said earlier and is a dextro rotatory. This glucose is produced in plants from carbon dioxide and water by the process of photosynthesis. Actually, we say that plants produce starch and cellulose by the process of photosynthesis, but as a first step it is this glucose produced in which carbon dioxide combines with water. There is a chemical sequence of chemical reactions going on. These reactions are free radical reactions which occur in presence of sunlight, chlorophyll uh, provides a catalytic surface for all these reactions and glucose is produced and then this glucose gets converted into other carbohydrates in plants. We can get glucose by the hydrolysis of sucrose also that is cane sugar. Cane sugar is the same table sugar or chemically known as sucrose. This sucrose is hydrolyzed, it can be hydrolyzed even enzymatically and chemically it can be hydrolyzed using some HCl and boil. We get glucose and fructose in equal ratio because this sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. And after hydrolysis, we get 1 is to 1 mixture of glucose and fructose and this mixture of glucose and fructose is also sometimes named as invert sugar. Now, why do we call it as invert sugar? Actually, sucrose is dextrotatory and this one hydrolysis gives two compounds, glucose and fructose. Out of these, glucose is dextrotatory whereas fructose is levorotatory and magnitude of optical activity of the fructose is more. So, net result of the product that we get, it is a levorotatory product. Actually, it is two com compounds and it is the mixture of the two compounds that is showing the levo rotation. But earlier stages when this thing was observed, nothing was known about the hydrolysis part or it is a combination of two compounds. It was observed that when sucrose is hydrolyzed, we get another sweet product whose optically activity is reversed that this is dextrotatory and this is a levorotatory. So, on that basis the name invert sugar was given. Honey is basically invert sugar. Honey bees when they collect this sucrose from flowers and they collect it, they also mix the enzymes and it gets hydrolyzed and honey is basically mixture of glucose and fructose. And that is why honey is also considered as a quick source of energy. Most of the Ayurvedic medicines, uh, they mix it with honey because when this Ayurvedic system was developed at that time, 
this system of giving glucose with the help of syringe or uh, direct into veins was not there. So, a person is ill and is not taking food and getting weak required some energy. So, uh, honey was a quick source of energy because honey contains glucose when honey is given to a patient it gets absorbed and energy is produced in that case. Then we can get this glucose by the hydrolysis of starch also. The starch is a polymer of glucose molecule and it is hydrolyzed although in presence of acid on boiling and we get glucose. Let us talk about the structure of glucose now. When this glucose was originally found out its molecular formula was determined and it was found to be C 6 H 12 O 6. Some chemical reactions were studied and I will discuss here only those reactions which give a direct idea about the structure of this glucose and one of those reactions is the reduction. When glucose is reduced with hydrolytic acid in presence of a little phosphorus, we get one of the compound as normal hexane. And when this glucose is reduced with sodium and mercury that is sodium amalgam, then we get a compound which is known as sorbitol. Both these compounds have 6 carbon in state chain, normal hexane 6 carbon chain, sorbitol also has a 6 carbon chain. So, these two reduction reaction they indicated that 6 carbon atoms are linked in straight chain in glucose. Then glucose was treated with hydroxyl amine. You know that hydroxyl amine gives oxyme when treated with any aldehyde or ketone and a mono oxyme was obtained. Means the aldehyde or ketone group whatsoever the functional group is there in glucose it is only one carbonyl group present because we are getting mono exam here. Then glucose was treated with hydrogen cyanide the product formed was cyanohydrin and we also know from the knowledge of basic chemistry that hydrogen cyanide adds on to carbonyl compounds to give cyanohydrin. So, both these reaction indicate the presence of a carbonyl group. Although we do not get any idea from these two reaction that this carbonyl group is aldehyde or a ketone, but we got the idea that there is one carbonyl group present in glucose. Then it was subjected to oxidation and on oxidation by bromine water we obtained a compound which was given the name gluconic acid and on structural elucidation and other chemical reactions it was found that this gluconic acid they contain it contains one carboxyl group. So, oxidation under such mild conditions it indicates that carbonyl group is present as an aldehyde because ketones cannot be oxidized by bromine water. Although aldehyde groups they can be oxidized into carboxylic group by this mild oxidizing agent. So, from this reaction we get the idea that the carbonyl group which is present in glucose it probably is present in the form of an aldehyde group. Then it was further oxidized by nitric acid. Nitric acid is a bit a strong oxidizing agent and when glucose was oxidized by nitric acid, we obtained a dicarboxylic acid which was given the name as glucaric acid or sacric acid. So, this compound had two carboxylic acid and when the gluconic acid which was obtained from glucose by the oxidation with bromine was subjected to further oxidation with nitric acid under identical conditions as simple glucose is oxidized the same compound was obtained. It means glucose contains one very easily oxidizable functional group which we said is aldehyde because can be oxidized by bromine and there is another group present in it which can also be oxidized by nitric acid, but there is no decrease in the chain length. It means that functional group is also present at one end of the chain and it can be a primary alcoholic group. 
because primary alcoholic groups they are oxidized into carboxylic acids with nitric acids. So, based on this we get another idea that probably glucose contains one primary alcoholic group. So, it means what ideas we have obtained by these reactions that glucose is a molecule which has got 6 carbon and state chain, has got one aldehyde group, has got one primary hydroxyl group. But what about the other oxygens because the molecular formula is C 6 H 12 O 6. The glucose was subjected to acetylation, this one treatment with acetic anhydride gave a compound which was found to contain 5 acetyl groups means it was a penta acetate and formation of this penta acetate indicates that in all there are 5 hydroxyl groups and that uh, gives us the complete account of 6 oxygen atoms in glucose that 5 of the oxygens are present as hydroxyl groups, 1 oxygen is present as aldehyde group and in all uh, there are 6 carbons, 1 of the carbon is present as aldehyde, 1 of the hydroxyl group is present as primary alcoholic group. Now, what about other 4 hydroxyl groups, how they are present? Glucose does not undergo dehydration easily. So, this indicates that on any carbon more than one hydroxyl group is not present because if any carbon contains two hydroxyl groups then it can very easily lose a water molecule. So, based on all this glucose was assigned this structure one aldehyde group, one primary alcoholic group, six carbon in chain and each of the carbon in the chain has got one hydroxyl group these are all secondary hydroxyl groups. So, when this structure was assigned uh, this is a simple you can say uh, structure written in which we have not talked about that how many isomers are possible because this carbon now has got one hydroxyl group attached to it, then one aldehyde group attached to it, one primary alcoholic group attached to it and one hydrogen attached to it. And then based on this there are 4 asymmetric carbon atoms, but when this structure was uh, given qualitatively we can explain all the reactions which we have discussed earlier on the basis of the structure that is on reduction we will get a 6 carbon chain all these functional groups are replaced by hydrogens and we get normal hexane. On reaction with hydroxylamine there is one aldehyde group we will get this oxine. On reaction with HCN this is aldehyde group where addition will occur and we will get this cyanohydrin. Then on oxidation with bromine water this is the aldehyde group will be oxidized to carboxyl group and this would be the structure for gluconic acid. Then on oxidation with nitric acid this hydroxyl group that is primary alcoholic group C A 2 O H and then this aldehyde group will be oxidized into carboxylic acids and we get this glucaric acid or sacric acid. And when it is treated with acetic anhydride all the hydroxyl groups they get converted into their acetyl derivatives. So, a penta acetate is formed. Although the reactions which were studied with this glucose for the structure illustration was not only limited to these 6 reactions which I have discussed. As I said we are talking about only those reactions which gave direct idea about its structure. Although these studies were carried for many years before the even this open chain qualitative structure for glucose could be determined. Now, as I said in this structure this contains 4 asymmetric carbon atoms and if a molecule has got 1 asymmetric carbon atom you know 2 enantiomers are possible and if the molecule has got more than one asymmetric carbon atom then the number of possible isomers are always 2 raised to the power n. So, here n is 4 because there are 4 asymmetric carbon atom. So, total number of possible isomers are 2 raised to the power 4 that is 16. It means with this molecular formula and this structure we have 16 possible stereoisomers and out of these 16 stereoisomers it is only one 
that represents the plus glucose which is synthesized in nature by plants which can be digested in our body and can be converted into energy in our body or can be converted into another molecules. So, which is that actually that configuration was determined by Fisher and that is also uh, a very uh, you can say time consuming and a series of reactions were involved on that and that process had taken almost 8 years in assigning the configuration to glucose and finally, Fisher assigned this configuration to this D plus glucose that is dextro rotatory isomer of glucose that belongs to D series. Uh, we will discuss that how Fisher determined this configuration that is what were the sequence of reactions that were used in our uh, next session. Uh, you can see here these are the 6 carbons which have been numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and out of these carbon number 2, 3, 4, 5. These 4 are asymmetric carbon atoms where the configurations has been assigned that which hydroxyl is on the right side or which hydroxyl is on the left side. And we find that this lowermost asymmetric carbon atom that is carbon number 5 in the chain contains hydroxyl on the right side. So, comparing this configuration with the glyceraldehyde, this was assigned a D configuration and that is why it was given the name as D plus glucose. This configuration can be written in Fisher projection like this, which is a planar representation and this hydroxyl is on the right side. So, this is a D uh, confirm, uh, configuration for this plus glucose. So, it is named as D plus glucose. We will take up how this Fisher uh, arrived at this configuration in our next session. Now, let us talk about fructose. As I said, fructose is also obtained along with glucose when sugar is hydrolyzed and I said the honey is also obtained from sugar. So, it occurs along with glucose in honey as well as in other sweet fruits. It is also a crystalline colorless solid, it is also soluble in water and it is also optically active, but this D fructose is levorotatory. So, that is why there is a minus sign although it belongs to D series, but it is levorotatory. So, it is called as a D minus fructose or a common name was given to it as levulose as D plus glucose was given the name as a dextrose, it was given a common name as levulose and it is obtained along with glucose on hydrolysis of sucrose. In the determination of structure for sucrose also, uh, fructose also, same sequence of reactions were used. Its molecular formula was also found to be C 6 H 12 O 6 as was the case in glucose and when a reduction reaction was carried out on it, fructose when reduced with hydrolytic acid and phosphorus, it also gave normal hexane. Uh, as I discussed earlier in case of glucose also, formation of normal hexane means uh, the 6 carbons are present in straight chain, there is no branching in it. Uh, so, this shows that 6 carbon atoms are linked in straight chain. Then fructose was treated with hydroxylamine, again a mono oxime was obtained. These reactions are in parallel to what we have studied for glucose. Formation of an oxime on treatment with hydroxylamine indicates the presence of a carbonyl group. So, from this reaction we get the idea that fructose also contains a carbonyl group and since it is forming a monooxime, it contains only one carbonyl group. When it was treated with hydrogen cyanide, a cyanohydrin was obtained. So, both these reactions as they uh, gave the idea in case of glucose that the compound contains a carbonyl group, here also we get the idea that fructose contains a carbonyl group, but whether it is aldehyde or ketone, 
we do not get any idea from these directions. Although this formation of cyanohydride, cyanohydrin gave the idea a little later when this reaction was extended that it contains a keto group and even the position of keto group was confirmed by this cyanohydrin formation that is on the reaction with hydrogen cyanide. I will take a little later. So, these reactions indicate the presence of carbonyl group in fructose also. Again similar reactions oxidation, oxidation by bromine water and when fructose was oxidized by bromine water, it was found that no oxidation occurs. You remember here that glucose was oxidized into gluconic acid. So, from there we got the idea that it has probably an aldehyde group because aldehyde group can be easily oxidized to carboxylic group, but here there was no oxidation. So, this indicates that probably aldehyde group is not there in fructose, then uh, this indicates that carbonyl group is not present as an aldehyde group. Then second oxidation by nitric acid. Now, when fructose was subjected to this oxidation, single product was not obtained. We obtained a mixture of products out of which two major products which could be isolated were tartaric acid and glycolic acid. Tartaric acid is a 4 carbon dicarboxylic acid which has got two hydroxyl groups also whereas glycolic acid has got one carboxyl group and one CH2O group. So, formation of these two products by the oxidation with nitric acid indicates that probably there is a carbonyl group in the chain because nitric acid breaks the carbon chain on either side of the carbonyl group. Since in case of glucose it was aldehyde group which was present at one end and then a primary alcoholic group at the other end both of them were oxidized. But in this case we have obtained a product in which the carbon chain has been cleaved. So, this indicated that most probably this carbonyl is in the form of ketone because only then it can be in between the chain. Had it been aldehyde it has to be at the one end of the chain. And formation of a 4 carbon fraction and a 2 carbon fraction. It also gave the idea that probably this carbonyl group is present at C 2 that is it is a carbon number 2 which is present as carbonyl group that is as a keto group. But a clear cut idea could not be made by the formation of these two products only. Because if it is at carbon number 3 even then the glycolic acid could be formed. So, actually the position of this carbonyl group was further confirmed by the formation of this cyanohydrin and the extension of that reaction. So, based on these reactions which we have discussed till now, if we consider that carbonyl group is at carbon number 2, this is a tentative structure which could be written for fructose that it is a 6 carbon chain, it is a second carbon at carbonyl group which is presumed at this stage one of the alcohol present here as primary alcoholic group and obviously other alcohol and then three carbons having one hydroxyl each. So, this was also confirmed by the formation of pentacetate. When fructose was treated with the acetic anhydride again a pentacetate was formed. So, that confirmed that this also contains five hydroxyl group. So, six carbon in chain, five hydroxyl group, one oxygen present as carbonyl group which is most probably present as keto group and then at position 2. So, based on this, this structure was written and we can explain these reactions. Reduction will give a normal hexane, a 6 carbon chain. Reaction with hydroxylamine will get the oxime. The oxime can be formed at this carbonyl group. So, all other carbon remains as such. This is the oxime formed here. Now, this shows the reaction with HCN that how it was extended and the position of carbonyl group at carbon number 2 was confirmed. This is tentative structure for fructose. If it is at carbon number 2, when it is treated with HCN, we will get cyanohydrin at this carbon number 2. 
this was hydrolyzed and you know that a CN group on hydrolysis gives carboxyl group. So, we will get a hydroxy acid and in both the cases two uh, diastereoisomers are formed after the reaction because when HCN adds on to this carbonyl group originally this carbonyl is not asymmetric carbon atom C double bond is the planar part. CN goes to this carbon H goes to this oxygen and this double bond gets converted into single bond it becomes OH. So, this carbon also becomes asymmetric carbon atom and when this carbon is converted into asymmetric carbon atom obviously, two stereoisomers will be formed here. But since these compounds will differ in the configuration at that particular carbon only where a keto group was there. So, they are not enantiomers they are diastereoisomers. When this C n is hydrolyzed into carboxyl group we get this two diastereoisomeric hydroxy acids. And when this hydroxy acid that was treated with hydradic acid and it was reduced. So, all the hydroxyl groups they were reduced and replaced by H and the one of the product that was formed was alpha methyl caproic acid means it is giving us a 6 carbon carboxylic acid with a methyl group at carbon number 2. IPAC name for this compound will be 2 methyl hexanoic acid. So, actually this compound was formed 2 methyl hexanoic acid was obtained after this sequence of reactions and that confirmed that it is possible this product can be formed only if the carbonyl is at carbon number 2. Had it been at carbon number 3 then this carbon will be giving us cyanohydrin and ultimately this will be giving us a carboxyl group and we will have carboxyl group plus longest 4 carbon chain attached to it and these two carbons would have been converted into ethyl group. So, we would have got a 5 carbon carboxylic acid with the ethyl group substituted at carbon number 2 that is 2 ethyl pentanoic acid, but actually we obtained 2 methyl hexanoic acid. So, on the basis of this reaction the position of this carbonyl group in fructose was confirmed. So, based on these reactions this structure was assigned to fructose and in this fructose again now we have 3 asymmetric carbon atoms. This cannot be asymmetric, this cannot be asymmetric because both of them have 2 hydrogens, this is a carbonyl group. So, these are the 3 carbons where each of them have got 4 different groups attached to them. This carbon has got 1 hydrogen, 1 hydroxyl, 1 this group and 1 remaining part of the molecule. Similarly, this carbon 1 hydrogen, 1 hydroxyl, 1 this part of the molecule and 1 this part of the molecule. So, these 3 are asymmetric carbon atoms and if there are 3 asymmetric carbon atoms then 2 raise to power 3 means 8. So, 8 stereoisomers are possible for this fructose and out of these 8 stereoisomers it is one configuration that actually represents D minus fructose which is the constituent of fruits or honey and we eat it as in our food materials which can be digested in our body also. So, again the structure of this the rather I will say configuration of this carbohydrate was confirmed on the basis of uh, the series of reactions which were given by Fisher and finally, this configuration was assigned to fructose and here also we find that hydroxyl group at the lowermost asymmetric carbon atom is placed on the right side. So, that is why it was assigned a D configuration although it is levo rotatory. So, its name comes out to be D minus fructose and this configuration when it is represented in Fisher projection that is a planar representation it is uh, represented uh, in a similar way as this is the representation for glucose where this hydroxyl was placed on the right side. Here also this hydroxyl will be placed on the right side and 
configuration for both this glucose and fructose were confirmed by Fisher, which we will take up in our next session. So, what we have discussed today? Today we have discussed that what are carbohydrates and we discussed that carbohydrates form an important uh, part of our diet. They are biomolecules, they are the source of energy in our body and in different forms they gives us the structure material to plants which we use in the form of wood. And uh, as I said that cotton is almost 100 percent cellulose which is obtained from wood and this wood gives us paper, uh, paper is also cellulose. So, these are all carbohydrates. Then biological functions carbohydrate, then occurrence of carbohydrate, uh, they occur in nature in different fruits and in plants. Then they are classified, as I said there are different ways of classifying, uh, they are classified mainly as monosaccharide, oligosaccharide and polysaccharide which actually depends on the structure of carbohydrates. Then we discuss the nomenclature of monosaccharides that they can be uh, represented as aldoses or ketoses and then we introduce the name uh, with the number of carbon atoms along with that say 3 carbon aldo triose or keto triose and so on. But these carbohydrates are more commonly still known by their common names because they are short and simple. And we discuss that how glucose can be obtained and glucose I said uh, can be obtained by the hydrolysis of sucrose or starch and in nature it is produced by the process of photosynthesis. And then we discussed some simple reactions which gave us the idea about the structure of glucose and fructose. Now, in our next session we will talk about some chemical changes which are involved in the carbohydrate chemistry and we will discuss the Fisher proof for the configuration of glucose as well as fructose. Thank you. Thank you sir, thank you so very much for giving us uh, once again a very very productive session. Uh, dear friends, uh, for this we would like to tell you that if you have any queries uh, then you can mail us at info.nic.in. Uh, info uh, our email id is info.cc at the rate nic.in where you can give your feedback as well as you can ask your questions. We would love to take your queries next time when uh, Dr. Aroda visits our studio and dear friends for you. Uh, we would like to tell you all that very soon we are going to upload this lecture on YouTube with the help of which you can see this lecture the number of times you wanted. Uh, we would be meeting again and we would be discussing um, uh, bio molecule, biomolecules that is uh, more on the carbohydrates more. Uh, till then take care, goodbye. Thank you sir, thank you so very much.